I'm Miguel Perez Ayuca, and I'm an engineer working for the European Space Agency. Lunar eclipses are quite a common event, so they happen more or less twice per year. It happens when the moon uh, is uh, shadowed by the uh, shadow cone of the Earth, and the sun, the Earth, and the moon are kind of perfectly aligned in space. So today I'm going to show you a bit how we image uh, such eclipses. The best moment, the moment uh, where the total uh, eclipse uh, occurs, is a bit longer than an hour. In that moment, it's not completely dark, the surface of the moon. What we see from Earth is a glow in pinks, uh, pink colors, uh, red colors, orange colors, very beautiful. It's, it's really the view of all the sunsets and sunrises that are happening in the Earth at the same time, projected into the surface of the Moon. So it's a really unique event and very beautiful. So we have three setups. We have a very basic setup that is basically a tripod and a camera with a low magnification. We have a second setup that is also camera and a tripod, but this camera has a photo lens so we have a higher uh, amplification of the image, or so magnification of the image. So we can see the moon bigger in our, in our uh, CCD. And this is the, let's see, the more advanced uh, setup, where we have a, a real telescope, full telescope, with a camera as well, attached to it, taking the images. So for the very basic setup, uh, we have a tripod, so that it gives stability to the image and a camera on top. Probably a 35 millimeters lens so that we can see an ample area of the sky. And we will just leave the moon drift and then we can compose a nice image uh, with all the moons uh, progressing and how the eclipse progresses. For the a bit more advanced setup, so with this type of telelens that is something between a normal uh, camera lens and a telescope, we can have magnifications of more or less, uh, well, this one is 500 millimeters, so we will have the moon that is probably a quarter of the image of the, on the CCD of the camera. Again, we need a tripod for stability of the, of the image taking, and now we are going to use a, a device that will take the images for us, so that we don't need to take, uh, to touch the camera. These devices have a timer, and you can say every minute, take an image of the moon. For this specific setup, uh, as you see, it doesn't have any tracking device, and it has quite some magnification on the moon. So the moon will move really fast. Uh, so you will have to be adjusting the position of the camera by releasing the knobs of the, of the tripod and tracking it. As well, the exposure times cannot be very long because you will, you will really see a bit of the blurring as the moon moves in your CCD. So, uh, so for the penumbral uh, part of the eclipse uh, and the early partial eclipse, you can, you can use exposures of one milliseconds up to maybe 10 milliseconds. That should be, should be good enough uh, with, a fix, uh, with a fixed setup. Uh, for the uh, full eclipse, uh, total eclipse, uh, you will have to expose a bit more, so probably up to 20, 100 milliseconds. Uh, so, so there you might start seeing uh, a bit of the blurring, and that's why if you want really sharp images of the moon, you need to go to a, to a mount uh, device, like the more advanced setup that we have, in which we are really tracking the moon. So we need a telescope with, has a, that has a quite large aperture. So we can have images that are very short exposure times uh, to avoid any blurring for the atmosphere. So in this case, we have a kind of one, mil, one meter uh, focal length telescope with uh, 25 centimeters aperture. And we have put again a reflex camera and we'll start exposing at a regular interval. We use it against an intervalometer, so a device that will allow us to not touch at all the device while uh, the event happens. In this case as well, we have mounted it in a mount. So the mount will 
uh, we will set it up such that it tracks the moon as it progresses in the, in the night sky. So we really will not have to touch even the, the tripod or any of the device during the, the observation. With this type of device, you will get the best uh, images of the moon. The moon will change quite a lot the brightness during the eclipse. So we will start really bright as the full moon and will slowly dim the, its light. So you will need probably to uh, be changing the exposure time of the image. And uh, remember that it's a slow event, so it takes, uh, up to f it takes five hours for the full event to develop. So you will have time to do tests uh, on your camera. So the best is that you try several settings until you reach an image that you like, and then you continue with that. The eclipse occurs in the night, if that's clear. Uh, so it's important that you have warm clothes. Also, it's interesting if you can have some baffles that you can put on your lenses because uh, the dew and uh, maybe eyes, you can ha maybe have condensation on the lenses. So with that, you will avoid uh, quite a big part of it. Um, remember as well to have your batteries ready before the event. So fully charged batteries, uh, your SD card uh, fully empty. You can also image the, the moon from, from inside your your house if you, if you feel like better to be inside of the, of the house through a window. So the moon is, is very big, it's 0.5 degrees in the sky. So you will have some blurring of the, due to the, the thermal uh, movement of the atmosphere, especially you have difference between the inside and the outside. But uh, in general the moon is big, so you will have pretty good uh, images uh, also from home. Of course you will need to check first the, the weather forecast. Uh, we depend on the weather to take the nice images, or in fact to have any images maybe. So uh, I wish you all uh, clear skies, yeah, have a great observation of the moon.